Vice President Paul Moshatili has been in the crosshairs of late, not least of all because his VIP protection officers assaulted unarmed civilians. We now take a look at his ascendancy to power. We speak to veteran Gauteng politician, Mr. Jack Bloom. Welcome, Mr. Bloom. Welcome. It's nice to be with you. Mr. Bloom, please start taking us through Mr. Mashatili's Gauteng years. Well, I was first uh, elected in April 94, and uh, Paul Mashatili was also elected to the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. I was chief whip of the Democratic Party, which only had five members, and he was leader of the House. And uh, as chief whip, uh, I used to meet quite often with him at meetings. He's always very courteous, uh, uh, quite friendly. You could always chat to him. Um, uh, and that was my impression of him in, in the early years. Uh, then he he progressed to executive office and uh, he had a number of MEC positions. The one thing I can say is that uh, uh, I don't think he spent much time on his actual portfolio. He was always more of an internal politician. He let the officials uh, uh, do what they do. But uh, time and again, uh, there were stories floating around about fishy transactions and uh, what became known as the Alex Mafia. Uh, a group of his friends from the earlier days, and uh, they seemed to be associated with uh, fishy contracts and huge amounts of money and irregular procedures. And uh, Paul Mashatila went uh, from portfolio to portfolio. And what I can say from my observations, I don't think he left uh, any particular portfolio, any particular department uh, in a better position than when he started. So it's not, it's not a politician of great external accomplishment. You couldn't uh, point and say, well, he took this department, it was in a lousy state, and he left it in a better state. Uh, uh, very often it was, uh, he left it in a, in a worse state. Um, so that's my impression of him. Uh, the His true character, if one can call it that, came out, uh, or a different facet of his character came out when the uh, Democratic Alliance asked questions about his use of a government credit card. Uh, in those days, the MECs had uh, a government credit card and they were quite profligate in what they spent it. And it turned out that uh, he had entertained uh, some associates uh, to a dinner at a very fancy restaurant in Johannesburg called Auberge Michel, uh, which I had never heard of, uh, but uh, he'd spent 96,000 rand there on one dinner. And then it turned out that it was uh, about a quarter of a million altogether on... Uh, you know, lavish expenses and dinners at this restaurant and, and elsewhere. So uh, then we discovered that he had a taste for uh, the high life on uh, other people's money. Um, but uh, I, I think that, uh, you, you know, as I said, he he didn't seem to excel in any of his portfolios. There was a brief period uh, when he was Premier of Gauteng. It was mm. when um, it was the tail end of uh, Shiloa, Mbazima Shiloa's premiership when he resigned to form COPE and Paul Mashatile became premier. Very undistinguished, uh, nothing particular happened. Uh, it was only for a period of seven months and of course I think he was expecting to be appointed, uh, uh, reappointed as premier after the elections and it didn't happen because according to it, one newspaper report at least, uh, there was too many questions being asked about his fishy associations and the Alexandra Mafia. So it seemed uh, he was too hot to even for the ANC to handle uh, with all these fishy connections. And uh, uh, Nomvula Mokonyani took the premiership. It's quite a blow to him, but the fact that he survived this long, even after that blow, uh, shows you that he's an internal politician in my view. Uh, you know, he works the branches and the ANC delegates, and he's managed to do that uh, all the way to the deputy presidency. But there was one particular uh, incident which uh, also occurred when he was at uh, the Gauteng legislature. Um, he he uh, was seen by uh, Alan Windy, who is now the premier of, uh, of, of Western Cape. Uh, Alan was just an ordinary MPL then. And he, he saw that, uh, uh, you know, Mashatila had holidayed at uh, Tyson Island in Nisla, where, you know, ha homes are very, very expensive. And uh, um, and according to other sources, uh, 
you know, he'd spent some time there and the owner of this house, the two owners of this house had got very lucrative contracts in the Gauteng provincial government. So there was an obvious question of, of conflict of interest. I was leader of the opposition in Gauteng legislature at that stage and I referred it to the public protector under the Executive uh, Members Act that it was a breach. Uh, I think what happened is that uh, they had to drop it because uh, when he lost with his bid to be Premier and he became a, a, a lowly Deputy Minister of S Sports, Arts at, uh, and Recreation at the national level, um, he was no longer in the Gauteng legislature, so it wasn't a matter of an ongoing breach of the Executive Members Act. Uh, but uh, these these allegations have resurfaced, and time and again they they come up again. But they're just very topical now because uh, it appears he's uh, you know quite close to becoming president of of South Africa. So I think it's very important we know who he associates with, uh, who is the real uh, Paul Mashatile, and what is his real capability in governing the country, rather than having you know fishy businessmen uh, who seem to lavish him with uh, gifts. But well, he has made an amazing comeback. Did could did you foresee that happening? I I uh, I have to say I did because uh, I, I knew at the time there were people who said Paul is very ambitious. Paul wants to be president of of the country. And uh, what uh, people didn't notice was how successful he was in Gauteng uh, as a launching pad for for his his aspirations. So uh, he was a provincial chair and a very powerful. A provincial chair. I don't think anything happened without his say so, and uh, he he's managed to work the internal politics uh, very well. I just think it's a sad comment is that you can't point to any period when he was an MEC or when he was uh, briefly the premier where he seemed to make any real difference in improving the lives of ordinary people. And uh, again and again, you know, the fishy associates that. Uh, that seemed to be around him and uh, all these fishy tenders and expensive uh, dinners that he had. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think in another democracy, they would have been disqualifying, but uh, unfortunately not uh, in South Africa. Have you had a look at the statement he issued in response to allegations made by News24? Well, it's the usual, you know, nothing is, is, is proven and he's entitled to be friendly with people, with certain people. And, but then we look at uh, what these certain people, uh, where they're getting their money from. And it's from, uh, you know, controversial contracts, which they haven't always delivered on. And uh, this was the pattern that we saw in the, uh, in the old Gauteng Public Transport and Roads Department, uh, where the number of people associated with Paul Mashatile were accused of all sorts of things. So there was an MEC for transport, the late uh, Ignatius Jacobs, uh, who was quoted in a, an investigation report called the Resolve Report, which found uh, all sorts of things going on there that weren't uh, properly investigated and followed up. Ignatius Jacobs said there was, quote, a criminal conspiracy uh, to in, in, in that department to, in awarding uh, contracts. And these were people that uh, Paul Mashatile had some links with. So, you know, even within the ANC, there were allegations of some type of network, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the term Alex Mafia was so sensitive, the ANC, that a uh, former speaker of the Gauteng legislature banned any mention of it. So if you said, ha, if you said uh, Alex Mafia during a sitting of the Gauteng legislature, she would order you out. So I got kicked out once or twice for saying Alex Mafia. I mean, it's freedom of speech. And, and she ruled it uh, out of order because it was implying that there was some sort of criminal conspiracy in the ruling party. Well, we've seen subsequent to that, the Zonda report, all sorts of massive scandals uh, that indeed it does look very much like a, quote, criminal conspiracy with the mafia-like uh, aspects. So, uh, I mean, I have to say that I think that, you know, if everything that's been alleged about Paul Mashatile is true, he was a pioneer of state capture. Uh, you know, he did it, uh, as I said, these are all allegations, but they've swirled around him for a long time. So it uh, wasn't just a Zuma with state capture. And uh, Paul Mashatile, according to, you know, as I said, uh, rumors and allegations, but there's a lot of them. This is what was happening in, in Gauteng as well. And then we see that he just seems to have uh, a lifestyle and spending money 
uh, way above what he could conceivably have earned uh, during his time in public office. So where does he get all this money from? And uh, uh, should, you know, I think that uh, these questions need to be answered if, uh, if he's going to step into the highest position in our country. But he is now within a heartbeat of the presidency. And unless these allegations can be proven, he is most likely to be president. What kind of president do you think he will be? Well, I think his number one interest is Paul Mashatela. He never struck me as hugely, hugely ideal, ideological. And uh, let me just say positive aspects, easy to get along with. I don't think he ever played the, the race card. I can't actually recall any time when he did play the race card. He was quite happy to have senior white officials in his department. He didn't come into a department and purge uh, you know, people with uh, different political views from him or if they were white or, or you know, not supporters of the ANC. I think that was a positive, if I might say so. Um, I think he can be very pragmatic, but uh, it's one thing uh, being pragmatic, which is a, a positive. It's pragmatic if you're going to advance the interests of the party, of the country, uh, then it's great because I think we need more pragmatism. We need to get what's work. We've got to fix up this country. But if you're being pragmatic in, in how you you know, climb the rungs of power and do what it takes to, to become president of this country... And, and feather your own nest at the same time. That's the sort of pragmatism uh, I don't think we should have. And unfortunately, um, as I said, he just never seemed to show any great political talent in fixing up departments that he was the head of, but he had great political talent in climbing up to the highest positions in the ANC. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jack Bloom, for sharing your experience of Paul Mashatili with us. That was Mr. Jack Bloom of the Democratic Alliance, a veteran Gauteng politician. Thank you.